Almost 1400 years ago, a group of 72 men, women and children stood in the face of 30,000 soldiers in the deserts of Karbala. Among the 72 was a man known to be as one of the leaders of the youth of paradise. He was a man who refused to bow to tyranny and ignore oppression. He was a man whose slogan and message resonate eternally through the winds of time. He is Hussein ibn Ali, the revolutionary martyr and the grandson of the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. This film seeks to understand why this battle is important to millions across the globe, what it taught humanity, who holds on to the message, and why the world refuses to forget Hussein. One of the most important thinkers, uh, clergy, and an example in his life, in his uh, talks, in his thinking, and of course, in his um, stand in life, a person who never compromised what he believed in. Hussein was the, was the brother of Hassan, and there were two sons of Ali, the Prophet's uh, cousin and son-in-law. To understand the importance of Imam Hussein, we need to go back to the time of the Prophet himself because the Prophet designates his successor as Ali to lead the community. And so we start to establish a principle of God deciding who should be the leader of the community. Selection of the name was divinely excavated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by informing Sayyidina Jibreel Amin to inform the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Not only that, uh, the fact that Sayyidina Imam Hassan and Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhuma are such uh, profound, uh, unique uh, qualities that cannot be underestimated. Karbala, for me, is a battle and a symbol of the, the collide between between Yazid, who, who, whose ambition, political ambition, blinded him and did not see the importance and the role of Al-Imar Hussein. So when he fought in Karbala against Al-Imam Hussein and his family and friends and was ready even to go to the extent of killing them, he gave the ugliest face of the merge between religion and politics. It's a battle for leadership and in, in, uh, in, all, in all religions you have, you have this, um, this battle, who, who is to be the leader. Um, it was, a, it was a decisive, it was supposed to be a decisive uh, uh, moment, a decisive battle. Everybody accepts that Yazid is a, a very bad example of Muslim life, let alone of Muslim leadership. He openly disobeyed the commands of God, he openly disobeyed the Sharia. So it's a crisis of leadership, and the crisis of deciding how are you going to respond when injustice and tyranny is facing you. Now, we have here a hadith of Prophet Muhammad which enables us to get a sense of the importance of this. He says on one occasion, the greatest jihad is to speak the word of truth into the face of a tyrant. This is the highest challenge to any human being, to actually face down a tyrant and not give in. 
So this is what's going on in the mind of Hussein in Medina with his community. And he knows that in a very short period of time, he is going to be faced with the demand to make an oath of allegiance to Yazid, who he knows to be a totally unworthy person to lead the community. The body was severed and cut into, mutilated in fact, into many pieces. But Imam Hussein did not give the hand because the hand uh, symbolized a pledge of allegiance. And we have the system of bay'ah and the bay'ah is to promise never to aid and abet in uh, or solicit uh, the fasiq or the fajr and to aid and abet those who are uh, clear violators of the Quran and the Sunnah to Nabi Wasallam. And today if we learn this lesson, it would be the most profound U-turn that any nation has ever taken instantaneously. On his journey to Kufa, which was brutally intercepted in Karbala's deserts, Imam Hussein was joined by 72 members of his family and loyal companions. This fact in itself upholds the nobility of Hussein, for he was prepared to sacrifice all he had and all he loved to maintain the purity of his grandfather's divine message. Something dramatic has happened in the Muslim community at this stage. We're not even yet 50 years after the death of the Prophet. And we are about to see the Prophet's own grandson being massacred. The night before the battle, Imam Hussein gathers together his people and says to them, look, tomorrow we're going to be attacked. Please, it's me they want. Go away, leave. And they respond, we won't go. We will stay, we will die with you. And now we see another huge human dimension of the question. What do you do if you are the supporter of an upright, honest, just person who is facing injustice. Do you stand with him, even at the cost of your own life? Or do you run to save yourself? Now remember, none of these people knew what was going to happen. So we're not only talking about them being willing to sacrifice their own life, but also the lives of their women and the children. Is there anything in life worth dying for? Is there anything so important that you are prepared to take a stand on it and not give in, even at the cost of your own life? The petals of the beloved Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, the children of Sayyidina Imam Ali, Karamallahu Ta'ala Wajhahul Kareem, who were placed upon the shoulder of Rasulullah and whose lips and whose cheeks and foreheads were flowered with the love of Rasulullah Imagine being born to that family. Imagine that body, that flesh being and emanating from that source. There is absolutely no doubt whatsoever with the verse of the Holy Quran and the mandatory requirement of the love of the Ahlul Baytul Athar قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرَى إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَى Tell them, Ya Rasulullah Wasallam, you are so humble, you don't want to request anything from anyone. But rather, except that you have love for my family. Such a beautiful notion. It doesn't take much expense. It doesn't take anything other than this consideration of consideration for the love of the Ahlul Baytul Athar. Karbala tells me as a, as a Christian priest, be very careful that faith does not go down the road of competition to control people's lives, but rather to give an example of sacrifice, an example of emptying ourselves 
for the sake of, of, of others. And Imam Hussein did not sacrifice his life in order to control the people. No. He sacrificed his life as well as Jesus Christ sacrificed his life that we may have life. That our lives become better quality. So it's a matter of quality of life rather than it's a matter of a political game and political ideology. I mean, one can point to a life given in sacrifice to a cause. I mean, Mahatma Gandhi is one. People have sacrificed in the sense that they, they spend their life to promote a certain cause. But in the case of Gandhiji, he, he, um, he gave his life in a similar way. He, he sacrificed his life, which is a lesson that we can all learn if, if the objective is, is uh, deserving enough. There are always individuals who are prepared to give their lives for it. Al Imam Hussein faced with courage and with enormous faith the corruption of religion. And I do believe that the corruption of the best is the worst. And the corruption of religion can be demonic. And Yazid gave the example of the ultimate corruption of religion, where Al Imam Hussein gave an ultimate um, example of the purity of faith. So when I look at Jesus Christ in his life, in, in his short life, like Al Imam Hussein's short life, he collided and he, he clashed with the religious leaders in his time. And the clash was severe. I tell you something, nobody would crucify a man just for being nice. And when Jesus Christ was condemned to death by, by the religious authority at that time, he was not put to death on the cross because he said to the people, love one another. He was a revolutionary like Al Imam Hussein. He shook the ground under their feet. It was his, his presence was a revolution. And because of that, his blood, an innocent blood, led to the life of the church. And the innocent blood of Al Imam Hussein led to the survival and the strength of Islam at that time and, and, and even today. So when we look at that, we should understand each other. You know, one of the biggest problems in our today's coexistence between Christians and Muslims is ignorance. We do not know enough about each other. But when we look at both Jesus Christ and Al Imam Hussein, we see this connection of sacrificing their lives in order not to compromise what they, be, what they believed in, not to put in question, but rather in practice what they were passionate about is the relationship with God. The, the very fact that it has, that, that his message is still with us, is, is, is testament to its, its, its strength and, and his perseverance and his sacrifice. Characters from the battle have become symbolic. There is Hur, who was forgiven after initially leading Hussein to Karbala, and Abbas, the heroic half-brother, whose hands were mutilated whilst trying to quench the thirst of the children. Al Hur is lined up with the Umayyad army and he knows that he is soon going to be given the order to attack and he breaks ranks and he rides down to Imam Hussein he throws himself from his horse and he asks for his forgiveness I am the one I have brought you to this place I have corralled you in the field of your own death Hussein raises him up, 
forgives him and restores him to human dignity. Imagine the spiritual strength of one who will raise up the person who has brought him to the point of oppression. They are short of water and somebody goes to try and get water and so we have a heroic story, the half-brother Abbas goes to try to get water and bring it back to give it to the women and the children of the community and he is cut to pieces in the process. Hussein actually takes out his own infant son, a baby in arms, and pleads with the Umayyads. I know that you've got it against me, but why should you have it against the baby? Give, him, give the baby water. Have mercy on the child. If you won't trust me with the water, I'll leave the child on the rock and you can give it water. And the response is to kill the child in the arms of his father. In all of that situation, he did not abandon Salah, he did not abandon Sayyam, he did not abandon Zakah, he did not abandon the Akhalaqun Nabi Sallallahu Firing that arrow and coming through the neck of one of the beloved son of Sayyidina Imam Hussein in response to one drop of water, that is, was the only thing that was requested. And it is this drop of water for which uh, Imam Hussein had uh, also made a promise that I will ask my grandfather to intercede for you if you were to just give a drop of water. So you see, before you enter into a contract with anyone, you must look at the value that they have. Will they be able to fulfill the value of the contract or the pledge that they are making with you? Today, our biggest problem is that we have all the three qualities in our leadership that we should not have. Ayatul munafiq thalathun. The, the qualities of a munafiq are three. Iza haddasa kazaba. When he speaks, he lies. Iza wa'ada akhlafa. When he promises, he goes against it. Wa iza tumina khana. When you entrust something to them, they do, they embezzle in it. Imam Hussein does not belong to one group. He has been acknowledged and revered by figures of all demographics and denominations throughout time. If we are to understand the meaning of Karbala, we need to take it out of an Iraqi context, out of a Shia context, out of a Muslim context, and to see it as a piece profoundly of human drama. As a community, we have a history. We didn't just start with our own generation. And we can look back into how other human beings lived the human project. We can take examples from them. We can also take warnings from them. These are the circumstances that led these people to do these terrible things. This is the person who in this situation responded in this wonderful and noble way. It can only and only give us uh, positive things to take back, no matter which group we belong to. I don't believe that the message of Al-Imam Hussein is limited to a race or, a, or a, a nation or a religion even. As much as we, I do believe that the, 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 the message of Jesus Christ is not limited to a, a, a nation or a race or a color or a whatever. Both have, have a universal message and the universality of the message comes from the, the depth of it, the, the rooted in their, in their culture, rooted in their faith, rooted in their love to their people and to God. This is what makes both messages universal. Imam Hussein has, must have infiltrated Hindu culture, Hindu experience, Hindu life. Um, because uh, Islam is, is, uh, has existed in India for a long time. Um, how it does, it's not easy to, to tell, but it obviously it, it, it stands to reason that it would have some influence on Hindu life.
Tazia was one of the ways that, uh, that we, we celebrated it, and it, it created a bit of a conflict uh, with the local uh, Muslim community. The Hindus introduced a lot of uh, music and singing. It was celebrated in Guyana, Trinidad, and Jamaica um, as Tazia. In Trinidad, they called it Hussein, after Hussein, and the same in Jamaica. Uh, where the Hindus and Muslims, uh, very, very small numbers, but it's, it's called Hussein there. But in Guyana, it's called Tazia. Remembering, keeping alive, commemorating those events gives us something upon which we can reflect in our own human lives today. I, as a Christian, would also want to take my own lessons in remembering the events of Karbala, to remember the day. We have a phrase, to keep the day as holy. Holy not in the sense that this is a wonderful thing, but holy in the sense that this is a profound moment of human history. And then to remember the events to keep them alive. The word remember doesn't just mean, oh, I recall the facts. It means, in a sense, remembering them, reliving them, they live on in my life and memory. And so I am reflecting then, what do those events mean for me today, and how do they speak to my human condition? I think the second thing is that Imam Hussein is called the Prince of Martyrs. And as the Prince of Martyrs, he gives an example to every human being of total surrender, total submission to the will of God. Because the martyr is one who makes the total surrender of their life to God. Even my very existence is in your hands. If it be your will, I will accept death at the hand of the enemy. And this reminds us of the human need to surrender all to God, to acknowledge that we are the servants of God, that our lives do not belong to us, they belong to God. And if it should please God that I should die at this time in this way, who am I to complain? Who am I to say to God, I know better? So martyrdom is a profound example of human submission, of human acceptance of the divine will in all things. Now, we may not be called to martyrdom today, but we are called to submit to the will of God today in every way. So remembering the events of Karbala are a way of remembering the human vocation to be the servant of God. The grandchildren of the beloved Prophet Muhammad the upholders of the Quran and the Sunnah to Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, why should they not be mentioned when they have given every last drop of their blood for the sake of the Ummah Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. It is only rightful that we are able to remember, commemorate, because in remembering and commemorating, you are telling the foes that here we are, they are not forgotten, they are alive in our heart, Allah has preserved their bodies, Allah will preserve them forever. If the head severed head of Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala an was still reciting the Quran on the spear then our Iman has not moved from there our Iman is that he still is reciting the Holy Quran this is the maqam the karama of Sayyidina Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala an and that we need to commemorate uh, personalities like that it is mafrudun alayna it is fard upon us it is the only way we can show to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are submissive to you how can we sub be submissive to Allah without remembering his anbiya if we want to remember the anbiya we will have to follow their sunnah and their advice 
how can we claim to have remembrance of the Anbiya alayhimu salatu wasalam when we do not remember those people who have preserved the actions and the sayings and the doings of the Anbiya alayhimu salatu wasalam and they are the greatest and the elite amongst us ala inna awliya Allahi la khawfun alayhim wa la hum Indeed, the awliya Allah, the friends of Allah are those who have no fear or worry whatsoever because they've never done anything for their own sake. They've only and only done things for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think there is um, uh, often a misconception and misunderstanding that the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah do not uh, commemorate Muharram. Um, myself, I am an Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah and here we have uh, not only 10 days but the whole of the month of Muharram is commemorated and dedicated in the remembrance and building up from the verses of the Quran to the Ahlul Baytul Athar. So we consider them absolutely valid. We consider mentioning them uh, part of our ibadah, part of our way of life. The Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah maintain the importance of the dhikr um, and the importance of uh, transferring the the pledge of the love of the Ahlul Baytul Athar. I am from among that category and I sincerely uh, uh, love and, uh, uh, and I am connected with the Ahlul Baytul Athar. Fourteen hundred years later, I feel the cross and the resurrection of Christ we celebrate during Easter and Karbala and, and the, the person of, of Al Imam Hussein still after all this, these centuries are never more relevant and never more important to us in the 21st century to bring us together in order to stand against atheistic secularism, against fanaticism which tries to cancel the other, to silence the other, and against any movement which breaks this bond which should be there because of a person like Al Imam Hussein and a person like Jesus Christ be between Islam and Christianity. The bond of peace, the bond of coexistence, and the bond of the Spirit. The, the free Spirit of God moves us in love, in mercy, in justice, in self-giving. All these values which no politics should hijack and no religion should have a um, monopoly of, but rather both together celebrate these values in the lives of the people, even in the 21st century. The message of Hussein is not confined to one race <clears throat> or, or, or religion. It's, um, it's, a, it's a human uh, situation and therefore it affects, it affects everyone of faith, all people of faith of all races, of all nations, of all religions. Uh, it's a lesson, uh, this, is, this is what interfaith could teach us by studying uh, the, the, the histories uh, of various uh, religions, the development of various religions. We learn lessons and the lesson of Karbala is, is this, that we, that we in, in order to resolve conflicts, um, we should meet in the spirit of, of harmony and, and love. The Battle of Karbala was not just a battle, but a lesson for generations to come. The place of God in the society is the heart, not the margin. And therefore, all of us, all of us, as Al Imam Hussein brought God to the heart of the faith and, and refused to give in to the political ambition and to the political competition. Today, in, in, surrounded by, by aggressive secularism, 
and globalization and, and, and all kinds of threats out there, we should, like Imam Hussein and like Jesus Christ, insist that Jesus Christ belongs and Imam Hussein belongs to the center of our faith and, and bringing God to the heart of our society. Faith is not about condemnation. Faith is about forgiveness. Faith is about proclaiming a loving and merciful God. And this is how we should educate our people. These are the lessons we should learn from Karbala. One of the things I think that um, this can teach is, 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 is pluralism, that we can all exist together in harmony. And um, I think Hindus being, uh, an, an Hinduism rather, being an older religion, they, went, they, ex they experienced all of that in the past and we've come to the conclusion that uh, the way to resolve these problems is simply allow, you, you go to your church, I go to mine, we live in peace and harmony. And that's, that's the way I think that we, we should go forward. What I find so attractive about the life of Imam Hussein is the many dimensions of his life, even just in these few days leading up to Karbala itself. We see some remarkably virtuous aspects of the life of Hussein. He is generous and kind with the enemy. He gives them water. He gives their horses water. He, he gives them, as it were, human dignity and respect. The way that we treat our enemy. Are these fellow human beings like me? They have mothers and fathers. They have wives and husbands. They have children and families just like me the ultimate human responsibility to take another human life? Another great thing that I take from the story of Hussein is his courage. It's easy to talk, but when you're actually waking up to face the field of battle, facing certain death, facing an uncertain future for the ones that you love, for your wives and the children of those who stand with you, it takes courage to stand your ground. And human courage is a very important part of the dignity of being human, in small things and in great. We learn lessons of bravery and we learn lessons of uh, istiqama, steadfastness, and we learn an immense lesson of uh, sabr. In Allah ma'as sabirin, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave triumphants, and how uh, throughout all of this process the, uh, the Ahlul Baytul Athar stayed, uh, stood steadfast upon the teachings of the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. For over 1300 years, generation after generation has commemorated the martyrdom of Hussein. Year after year, without fail, Hussein is remembered. We need, in such occasions like Karbala and Al Imam Hussein, like Easter, to come together to highlight the values, to highlight the importance of such people who enriched in, in our lives and have and continue to enrich it and they will always continue to enrich it in, in their presence, in, their, in our hearts, in our lives, uh, with their wisdom, with their giving, with their example, with their image and also with their faith. So any, any a facet of celebrating their lives is an, a, a plus to humanity, is a plus to the coexistence between religions. And also it's a plus for all races, all religions, all denominations, all sects to learn how to live together and to love each other. The fact that this, the message still exists means that it has some quality, it has some, some, some power uh, um, uh, and it influences, it influences uh, 
great uh, numbers of, of Muslims. Um, that alone is, is, is very survival, is, is, is a testament to its, its, uh, its strength. Ali was fighting against the enemy and the battle was going backwards and forwards. The two of them were fighting together and eventually Ali overpowers him, has him on the floor and is just about to kill him. And his enemy from the floor spits into his face. And Ali puts away his sword and walks away. And his own supporters are saying, what are you doing? You had him. He was on the floor. He was in your hands. One stroke and you would have killed him. And Ali responds, and I would have done if I could have delivered that stroke before he spat in my face. Because then I would have been acting with right motives, with right intention. But once he spat in my face, I was so angry that he had insulted me in this way that I would have been acting for the wrong motives, the wrong intention, and I could not kill him in that situation. Now then, this reminds us of the morality of warfare and fighting. It reminds us of how you treat your enemies when they are captive, and we see the way in which the women and children of the field of Karbala were treated with inhumanity, with disrespect, without human dignity. Is that an appropriate way to treat another human being? Just because they are your prisoner? We see the way in which the dead are mutilated and destroyed so that you can hardly find bodies to bury. The life of Sidna Imam Hussein, and as he moved from one area to another area, those who were the instigator, those who were sent by Yazid, those who were sent by you know uh, other um, uh, leaders uh, to instigate and to follow the Ahlul Baytul Athar, the methods that they developed and adopted in order to get confession or in order to frighten them away is something that is reflective of what we see in our society. We ourselves have become cruel to our own people and these are sunnas of Yazid and his ways. I choose the word selfless to describe him because he could bravely go beyond the the temptation of being a caliph or a king. He went beyond the temptation of power, the temptation of authority, and he chose to give a lesson of self-giving, forgiveness, um, accepting to sacrifice his life in order not to compromise his beliefs and faith. And sacrificing your, your, yourself for what you believe in is definitely a big sign of being selfless. Hussein dies in the desert. His followers are killed with him. These are, in the terms of the world, pretty insignificant acorns and yet it reminds us that God's acorns grow into mighty oak trees because here we are 2,000 years after the time of Jesus 1,400 years after the time of Hussein and we remember them and they are examples to us still and their names live on in the lives of their followers in ways that they could not possibly have imagined and it reminds us then, in our life of faith, what matters is not the impact that we have, how can we measure it, but how faithful are we to what God calls us to do and to plant, in the trust that the acorn that we plant today, however small it may be, in God's good grace and in God's good time, can grow into a mighty oak. This is the life of faith. We do not ask to see results now. Their mentioning uh, softens our heart. Uh, 
when our hearts have become uh, you know rigid and uh, uh, harsh and so it is the ahlul baytul athar it is the love of rasulullah sallallahu it is the karamat of the uh, the uh, the ahlul baytul athar and the mu'jizat of the beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi that softens our hearts and makes us uh, and our pledge uh, become reaffirmed uh, to our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wasallam without imam hussein without his courage without his perseverance Without his revolution, without his martyrdom, the world would not be what it is today. We should celebrate the achievement of Al Imam Hussein. Look at the impact of such a person, not only on his community, on his uh, religion, his impact on the world. So without without him the world will be a poorer place in in wisdom in faith and in courage and because of that i feel it's an opportunity for me as a christian to look at a, a great person like this and celebrate his life so long as we believe in it we must pursue it and we must we must uh, continue to teach it because the world will is a richer place for that Every day we have the opportunity to live the Karbala spirit. Every day we have the opportunity to show those higher virtues that Hussein showed. And so Hussein becomes a role model, an example for every human being. There is no better word than a rose. A rose without color, made out of light, can you imagine? that gives off a fragrance far better than any other rose. There is no better word than the word rose. The word rose petal occurs in Hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi wa Wasallam. Many other words, there can always be an exchange of a better word. Our words are manifest and dependent on our ability to grasp and there will always be but the description of them being a rose certainly befits them because their cheeks although differences exist between world religions Hussein is a tying knot connecting all believers and non-believers alike to their inner humanity memories of Karbala will forever be etched in the minds of believers and revolutionaries for Hussein goes beyond our vision and understanding.